Hey teens, I'm Miss Abby, your teen services librarian for the Slidell branches of the San Tammany Parish Library. Today we're going to learn how to make sunpaper art, which is a craft in our September Arts and Crafts tote. Before we go over how to make the sunpaper art, let's talk about our teen totes. Here at the San Antonio Parish Library, we have teen subscription totes, and we have two of them. One of them is our teen book tote, and for that one, you register between the 1st and the 15th of every month to receive between the 1st and the 15th of the following month. And in that one, when you go to register, it's going to ask you to pick between two themes. We're going to choose two books from the library collection that match that theme for you to check out. And then we're going to throw in some snacks, some swag, some fun things. Sometimes it's a free book or a t-shirt, a cool pair of socks, some candy for Valentine's Day. You never know what we're going to throw in there. So you should always subscribe to your teen book too. The second tote we have is the one that you have now, your arts and crafts tote. For that one, we put two crafts for the month. So generally we advertise what it is pre before you register so you can see what you're signing up for. So this month it was the Sun Paper Art and Stranger Things bracelets. Uh, next month it could be a Halloween theme, something fun for you to do. We do try to do a theme. So this one is for the eclipse that's happening October 14th, so don't forget to watch that. And I did make this one more space themed for that. So those are our two teen totes. I'm really excited for y'all to go through and register for those every month and see what we have for y'all. If you did not register for the teen tote and you're doing this from things that you have at home, um, most of this is stuff that you can either improvise or find at your house. You will need to purchase probably the sun paper if you don't already have some. Um, but you can find that at most of your local craft stores. Uh, and we're going to go over the materials needed for this craft. So it's going to be kind of a faster craft to do, and you don't need a lot of materials for it. So you're going to need sun paper, and you're going to notice on your sun paper, one side is dark and the other one is a bright color. The dark side is the side that the sun is going to bleach. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you want to make sure you use the correct side. So you need your sun paper, a clear piece of plastic. So for this one, I had some sheet protectors laying around, so we're going to use those and that'll keep your project and everything from flying off of the paper if the wind blows. You can even tape this down to the cardboard. So if it's a windy day, you may want some tape with you. Uh, so the designs to cut out, you can also go around your house or your yard and pull items that you already have. So if you wanna use leaves and do a nature print, or you wanna put random objects and pieces of paper or toys that you have, you may do that too. Um, I included some shapes, some fun shapes in your bag. You're also going to need a pair of scissors. This is not in your bag, so you're going to need to get a pair from the house. Um, you may also want some tape, and after your project is over, you're going to need some paper towels, but you're probably going to have these in the kitchen already, and you're going to be in the kitchen or bathroom to finish this project because you're also going to need running water. So to get started, we're going to choose what designs we want and cut them out and place them or figure out our placement on our paper. Now again, when you use this paper, there's going to be a bright side and a darker side. You want to use the darker side uh, for your image because that's what the sun bleach is going to be. So anything that is not covered, anywhere that the paper isn't covered is going to turn to this color. Scratch that. Anywhere the paper is covered is going to be this color and then the opposite is going to be this color. Scratch that, reverse that. 
I was a little bit confused, but it came out really cool. So for this one, I have some space shapes here. Also, um, for the one that I made, I had some glitter. So I just threw some glitter out on the paper for my stars. So you may want to do that too. Um, let's see. I think I want to do this planet. Maybe a few stars and the rocket ship. Now keep in mind, anywhere the paper is covered is going to be the brighter color, but also there's not gonna be details unless you cut them out. So if you can't see the paper, then it, that detail isn't going to be there. So I think I'm gonna go with this rocket ship. It's kind of cool. And it's gonna take me a minute to cut everything out, but we're gonna start going and I'm gonna show you the process. And then I'll go and finish everything so you're not just sitting here watching me cut. But I'm gonna show you the process so that you can see how I got details. Any details that I wanted. And I'm not the best cutter and you don't have to be amazing at it because it's not gonna be exactly crisp unless you find a way to push it all down straight to the paper. I wouldn't do anything with stickers because it will ruin the paper. So if you have a piece of plexiglass and you wanna throw it on there, you're welcome to. I did find that the um, sheet protector worked great and I really liked the outcome of the look. It kind of looks like you tried to take a photo in space, kind of like you were looking for Bigfoot and it just didn't develop quite all the way so you don't actually have proof of alien life. I like mine. I thought it was really neat. Um, but these can be like frames and put up on your walls or put in your notebook for school if you have a science notebook or, or binder with the clear front. Um, I just think they're really neat. I liked having it. I think I'm going to put one up by my desk to look at because it's just so pretty. Okay, so if I put this rocket ship down as it is, it's just going to be one solid shape. I'm not going to have different shading for the fire behind it or even the propellers, none of that's gonna show up. Um, so if you want that, you need to cut that out. So I'm going to do a little bit of detailing, but not a ton because it's kind of hard to cut all of this stuff um, if you're not a fantastic cutter. I am not. Some of y'all will get really detailed and that's great. It doesn't have to be, and I wanna show y'all what it looks like if you don't go and sit here for 20 minutes just trying to cut out a spaceship. Um, if you do, you do you. Um, I want to see them. I'm sure they're going to look amazing. But I personally am happy with it looking kind of like I was actually in space trying to take this photo. I don't want mine to look perfect and crisp. Uh, some people do, and that's okay. I want mine to look kind of unprofessional photography in space. Now, again, you don't have to do the space theme. That is what I included in your bag. But you're welcome to grab things from around your house. Okay, so what I did here was just cut the darker fire so that I can see this other propeller and it kind of looks like the, the, it's being propelled behind it. And just a little bit up here at the nose where this white is, I might do another little piece on the end just for definition. Um, and I'm not cutting all of the white. I'm just kind of, oop. Yes, I am, because I accidentally cut too far. So I did cut all the light, but that's okay, because I can just kind of stick the nose back on however I want. 
So I think I'm actually going to put my spaceship right about here. I kind of want it to be the focal point. So this is really about design. You want it to, you want to figure out your placement. You want to think through how you're doing everything. You want to make sure there's room for everything you're cutting. Kind of piece it together. Have fun with it. Um, I certainly did. I had an alien on my other one. All right, so I'm gonna go right about there. I think that's pretty cool. And then I'm gonna go cut some more of my stuff out and then I'll come back with the idea of how I'm doing this. Okay, so I have kind of an idea of how I want mine to be. So I have my little planet that my rocket ship is going to. I just put out a couple stars. Again, on my other one, I had some glitter and I thought, why not? So I threw that in there. You could throw some beads on here or something. Just anything that's going to kind of block the sun from reaching to the paper. However you want to do it. Make it fun. Experiment. I might go throw some glitter on it before I go put it in the sun. I'm not sure yet. But I have my basic layout and I put everything kind of on here before I put it in my sheet protector. You can do this however you're comfortable um, I did find that it kind of stayed exactly how I had it, but I had to be careful. So I'm going to take my paper and slide it gently into my bag. And then I'm going to let it lay down. I'm going to keep it pretty flat. So also in your bag is a piece of cardboard. And I'm just going to lay my sheet onto my cardboard. And that's going to keep me from like dumping everything and also if it's in the grass or something it'll keep the moisture from getting into this bag it's just a nice little barrier so obviously you don't want to do this on a rainy day you need it to be nice and sunny or at least a nice sun patch outside so i'm going to take this outside and put it in direct sunlight for about 10 minutes and then i'm going to come back in and show you what it looks like um, again, if it's a rainy day, take a piece of tape and go on either side and tape it down to the cardboard. Um, that'll keep it from blowing away and make sure that nothing moves inside this bag. Okay, so I put my paper out there for roughly 10 minutes. You can do ten, uh, 5 to 10, however you're feeling. Uh, so I did tape it down so it wouldn't blow away because it is a bit of a windy day. Uh, but as you can tell, there's a little bit of condensation in this bag. Uh, shouldn't affect my pit overall picture, but we will see. Um, I think it looks pretty good. So here's the thing. This is what it looks like now. But now I've got to go and give it a rinse. And when I give it a rinse... It's not going to look as defined, and then the colors are going to kind of reverse a little bit. So I'm going to go wet it, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So this is when you're going to need paper towel, and you can put that on top of your cardboard. And um, just let it dry for a while. So I'm just going to throw this sheet protector away because of the condensation that's inside of it. I want to mildew. So what I'm gonna do is put my paper towels on top of it so if the moisture gets through, it doesn't ruin my cardboard or anything else around uh, where I'm leaving it. So I'll be right back and you'll see what it looks like when it's wet. All right, so I have rinsed my paper. You just need to rinse it for like a minute or so. Um, you're gonna see the color kind of coming off of it a little bit. You can definitely see it on my paper towel. I have some blue on here, but I'm just going to lay it on my paper towel and I'm going to let it dry. And it's going to take probably about 20 to 30 minutes to really develop. So you're kind of developing it a lot like a picture um, in a studio. It's really kind of neat. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was really cool how it came out. I'm just dabbing some of that extra moisture off the top. And we're going to let it sit and do its thing. So I have one finished. I've kind of already showed you a little bit of it, but let's throw it for a better look. So anywhere where the lighter is was covered by um, objects or paper. So like I said, I cut out some objects, like a little meteorite, 
I did a spaceship just like I did the shuttle that we put on the other one, the rocket. I cut some little spots in it so that it have some definition. Um, I just thought that would be fun. I threw some glitter, had a little alien. So where and remember, wherever you want any definition, you need to cut out or put on here um, because it's not going to be the same as the image that you placed. So you want it to look. You want it if you want the definition. You need to cut the definition out. You need to give it the chance to develop. Um, and what happened with the rinsing is we stopped the chemical reaction created by the paper. Uh, but remember, too, you want to use the darker side, not the light side. That's where the UV uh, transitions happens. So make sure it's on the correct side to get bleached. And make sure you put it in direct sunlight for roughly 10 minutes. Thank you for joining me for some paper art in honor of the solar eclipse on October 14th. I had a lot of fun making this. I hope you do too. I thought it came out kind of cool, my little galaxy. Um, my second one is a bit more simple, but I do think once it's finished drying, it's going to be just as cool. Have fun and enjoy. Don't forget to sign up for the next Arts and Crafts tote for October. Hey teens, I'm Miss Abby, your teen services librarian for the Slidell branches of the San Tammany Parish Library. Today we're going to learn how to make sunpaper art, which is a craft in our September Arts and Crafts tote. 